Hi, I'm back here again in Google Sheets and this video is going to be the last in my series on building a custom CRM system in Google Sheets. In this video I'm going to be talking about protecting ranges and sheets as they relate to your CRM system. So the way in which you enact protection on your Google Sheets CRM system is going to depend on how you use it and what kind of people have access to it. If you're the only person that interacts with and has access to the sheet, then we don't really need to worry too much about protections, although you might still want to add them to avoid accidental data removal or overwriting. But if you're giving access to the sheet to more than one person, say for example that your accountant has access to certain sheets on the CRM system, or you have multiple staff interacting with the sheet all at the same time, then you may want to add protection to avoid accidental or deliberate overwriting of data on the sheet. You can also designate certain people to be editors of the sheet um, while giving read-only access to certain other people. So I'm going to walk you through a few examples of what you can do. Um, I'm not going to cover this comprehensively as you'll be the one making the decision about who has access to what data and what they can change when they do decide to change it. To start with, our client sheet template is really going to be static and it's not going to be changed by anybody. So we don't really want anyone to have um, edit access to this sheet and you probably want to restrict access even to yourself to avoid accidentally deleting or overwriting that sheet. However, because this sheet is being cloned multiple times, we can't protect individual ranges the way we normally would. If, for example, I protect this range up here by selecting the whole range, uh, right clicking and then going to protect range. If I set a permission to uh, show a warning, for example, expecting that to be copied across when I create new customer sheets, if I try to run that script now, we'll find that the destination sheet uh, doesn't actually have those same protected ranges. So these cells which I've protected from editing on my template sheet are perfectly editable on this destination sheet. So that's not a great solution for us. So here in the main body of this function we might like to add some more tasks which are going to add that uh, range protection automatically for us. So these next two lines are getting the sheet by the name and then getting a particular range, which is G2, and setting the protection to set warning only. Now we have that client sheet here and G2 is this cell. If I try to overwrite that, I'll get an error saying that I can't do that. However, none of these other ranges are protected yet. So you might like to duplicate that particular line of text to protect some or all of the different ranges that you have on your uh, client sheets as they're produced. And of course, this is going to work across multiple sheets as they're being created one by one. The next thing you might like to do is enable protection on just your client sheet template by right clicking and going to protect sheet, set a permission, and you can choose only you as an editor, you can set another editor, or you can choose to show a warning when editing a range. This sheet is now locked and it can't be deleted accidentally. However, because we're not really interacting with this sheet, once we have it nailed down in terms of the formatting we have, we might like to hide it completely. And we can do that quite easily by right clicking and selecting hide sheet. And it's no longer going to show up down the bottom so we never have to worry about it. If we do need to find it again to make some edits to it, we can select all sheets and then choose the grayed out client sheet template and the sheet will now be unhidden. Having the sheet hidden doesn't affect whether your script can interact with it to make copies of it. So that's a good way of keeping it out of sight so that it can't be easily altered by mistake. Now you might like to share individual sheets with other people uh, but unfortunately with Google Sheets there's no easy way to do that but what we can do is simply make a copy of an individual sheet and copy it to a new spreadsheet. Then we can open that spreadsheet 
and share this with whoever needs it. Say for example, say for example, your accountant wants to review your business expenses, you can provide access this way. Of course, whenever you are sharing your sheet with other people, uh, be sure that you know exactly what it is you are sharing uh, and make sure that you're not giving access to any sensitive data to anyone who shouldn't have it. Also try to make sure that you know what kind of access you're giving to others. So for example, most people that you'll be sharing your sheet with will only need uh, view access. Uh, you don't want other people to be editing your sheet unless they work for your company as well. When you are sharing your sheet, if you click on advanced, you may also like to prevent editors from changing access permissions. And you might also like to disable download options so that people who are viewing your sheet aren't able to make a copy of it. However, because I'll be sharing this sample sheet with whomever wants access to it, I will be providing access, but only to view. But at this point, I'll walk you through how to make a copy of a sheet that you only have view access to. This is what you'll be doing if you intend to download and make use of this sheet. Um, you'll be accessing a sheet on my drive, making a copy of it locally onto your drive, uh, and then making whichever edits you need to make. So for now, I'll untick this second option, and I will change link sharing to on, and we'll leave this as can view, so that whomever gets access can view the spreadsheet but not edit it. And I also have no sign in required. So that person doesn't necessarily need to sign in in order to get access to the sheet. However, if you are intending to make a copy of the sheet for your own use, you will of course need a Google account and Google Drive to copy your sheet to. But since you're watching these Google Sheets videos, I'm going to assume that you do have your own Google Drive and we'll proceed from there. I'll save my changes. Here is our sharing link at the top of the screen. I'll save my changes again and click done. Okay, so here I am in my Chrome browser, uh, signed in with a completely different Google account and I'll punch that uh, sharing link into the address bar and hit enter. And here we are viewing that sheet um, without any edit permissions. So if I go ahead and try to enter some data into these fields, I'm not able to do that. But what I can do is come up to File and make a copy. And we want to make a local copy in my own Google Drive. I'll leave the name as it is. Click OK. And there we go. Now I have a local copy of this spreadsheet and I have ownership and full edit access. If I navigate to Tools and Script Editor, you'll see that all of the script files also came across when I duplicated that sheet and I also have edit access to these as well. Now I can add, modify and delete individual script files and customize each function as I need to. However, because all of these scripts are new to me, or at least new to my Google account, each time I try to run one, I will be asked to provide authorization. And I covered this in a previous video, uh, but I'll go through it really quickly here. Um, you'll be first asked for permission to run a script. You can hit continue. You'll choose an account with which to run that script. You'll be warned that the app isn't verified by Google. If you're happy to proceed, you can click on Advanced and go to GSS CRM. You'll be warned what kind of access the script is asking for. Uh, and this encompasses all of the different permissions that all of the script files are asking for, not just the function that we're trying to run. So you can review those as needed uh, and get more information about each of them. Once you're happy with what you've read, you can then allow that script and it will proceed to run. So that's about it for this video series. I hope it's been helpful to you and that you can make use of it in your own business. Uh, and I hope to see many different iterations of this project out there in the future.
Sharing links to these sheets as well as all of the code which I've written will be available in the description if you want to download those and make use of them. If you do have any questions please go ahead and leave me a comment and I'll try to help you out as best I can. If you'd like to arrange for extensive customization of your sheet and you don't feel up to it yourself, you can send me an email and we can discuss your requirements. And lastly, if you do enjoy my videos, if you find them useful, or if you'd just like to see more of them, then you can help out by contributing to my Patreon, which I'll link to in the video description. I'll be starting another interesting project soon, so keep an eye out for that. If you haven't already subscribed, then please do so. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.